quite frankly, Ed Ogeron is not going to be LSU's coach any longer because he didn't win enough games. You have to start there. Anything else is probably a little disingenuous. But, you know, you know as well as I that if you have other messiness going on, but you're winning, you know, the way people treat that goes a little differently. But, yeah, I think – I think so much of the story of the last two years is how, you know, a guy who, in my opinion, earned that national title. I know a lot of people try to, after the fact, you know, say it was luck and all these things. I don't. I think Ed Ogeron earned that national title, and I think in the two years since, you kind of saw a, an epic recipe of kind of what happens when a guy, you know, who you know already has a bit of a volatile, you know, up-and-down career, reaches the height of his, you know, profession right as a pandemic hits and right as he's going through a divorce. And I think it's a – and he's just to replace his entire staff and team, and I just don't think he he handled that entire situation perfectly. I think I think he would probably say that. You know, I think I think his single life created some messiness. I think the Title IX scandal at LSU absolutely created some messiness. And then you add in, you know, some troubled hires, quite frankly, and – losing the locker room due to cultural issues there's some political comments and then and then on top of that just not on field results and players not developing like they used to i think as one source in the story put it you know if if 2019 was a perfect storm of everything going right uh, i think the last two years have been a perfect storm of of everything kind of going wrong there absolutely so a lot of stuff there <laughs> brody some of the stuff we we thought we knew about some of the stuff was speculated let me let me stay on the field, in the locker room first, and then we'll go off because yeah. I don't want to bury the lead here. What, what you and I both know, for all these indiscretions or alleged issues, uh, Ed Ogeron would still be there right now if he were, if he were undefeated. So let's not, let's not act like uh, exactly. winning doesn't uh, trump everything else. So you mentioned the George – well, you didn't mention it, but you're alluding to what happened a year ago right after the George Floyd incident. There were, there was a, there were a million stories coming out of, of Baton Rouge that he had lost the locker room. He had gone on Fox News. Uh, he had supported uh, uh, President Trump, who they, they appeared to be fairly close, which, uh, which is his, certainly his prerogative. Can you pick up that story right there and tell us what, what you yeah. learned? Yeah, I mean, that one's a tricky situation because, quite frankly, I think I'd be the first to tell you, Ed Ogeron is a pretty apolitical person. He is. And, you know, he was doing a lot of PSA stuff during the pandemic. He was on Fox News, and he, you know, he, he basically was asked about President Trump. And because President Trump was good to him, you know, at the White House when they won the title, he said, I love President Trump. You know, I think he's doing a great job. And, and I think that upset a very large portion of a majority black roster back at LSU. And, you know, I think there was a lot of people kind of really upset with that, and that would have been one thing. But then, and then it kind of happened more behind the scenes. And then when that protest happens after George Floyd and after teams across the country are protesting, not just LSU, you know, most coaches went out. You know, Lincoln Riley went and marched with this team, for example. Nick Saban went and marched with this team, and and Ogeron did not do that, and he handled that situation. Uh, I think he's admitted multiple times. You know, he did not handle that situation well. Then there was a. A meeting with most of the roster, you know, uh, during that protest when he finally went, met, went and met them. And I think that left a lot of people more upset after he tried to cool things down. And I think that really opened up the situation from there on out where that, that locker room was disconnected. A lot of players didn't want to play for him anymore at that point. And, you know, th that, that, I'm not saying that's why they went 5-5 five and five in 2020, but it certainly didn't help, that's for sure. Brody Miller with his – Brody, uh, the, the coaching hires have been well documented. Some of the things that I learned in, the, in your article have not been uh, reported until now. And it, it's, it goes down a road that I think we all would prefer not to go down. But in this case, I, I think it's unavoidable. Ed Ogeron had been married for, I think, 23 years. Uh, I've met his wife. You know, you knew her. Uh, she went through a very difficult – illness a couple of years yeah. ago and he stood up for her and so did everyone else just like she had supported him when he uh, battled his demons and as you tell in the story I'm going to let you tell it uh, from the championship night on uh, it came apart quickly and then rumors all over town started surfacing yeah and, and, I, and I'll lead by saying I'm not trying to dunk on any coach for having a personal life I, I, it's not my job and not something I ever in a million years want to do like you said but, yeah, I think after the championship, suddenly, you know, a guy who had been, you know, pretty, you know, private and a little more quiet life for 23 years is suddenly the most popular guy in the state, and he's single. And, you know, I think he enjoyed it. And, and hey, I don't care. But and most people in the program I spoke to, they don't have a problem with it, but they're created some messiness. You know, there were women being brought around the LSU facility and things like that. And there was just a different, I don't know, 
I'm not saying he didn't care about football most, but there was just kind of a different priority, in, you know, in how he handled things. And and then there was just messiness in in certain situations. That is in the story. There's a instance with an exchange with a you know the wife of a uh, I'll just put it as a high ranking LSU official. And again, wasn't something horrific he did, but it's just one more situation where he was hitting on her and that created a messier situation for him. And, and that's not why he's fired, like you and I said, but it, it just added to a general messiness for these last two years when you compile, you know, that noise going off the field, the locker room issues and the on-field results. It really, like, I, I always kind of want to make that clear. That's not why he lost his job, but it's certainly just uh, it's something that contributed to, I think, how things went downhill the last two years. Bernie, rightly or wrongly, the, the one thing I've heard from friends who read your article was just that scene. And I, I, could I ask you to, to explain it? Because I, I know uh, isolated, it may not have been that important, but you obviously and your editors felt it was important enough to include in your piece. And that's the scene where Coach O meets a woman, I think you wrote, at, at a gas station. Yes. So yeah, he. It's a. I mean, I've heard different versions of the story, and it's a tricky thing. But I think there was an, an interaction with a, a woman at a gas station. I believe, I believe Ed Ogeron got some flirty vibes from her, and you know, he picked up on it and probably you know hit on her a little bit. And again, I don't think he, he by any means he did anything awful there. But it was just you know it was the wife of a, again a, a, a person who matters at LSU, and it, it, we we thought it was important just to explain kind of the. And again, I keep using this but he, word but here. But he, kind of they a, were talking about it, uh, Brody. They were talking about uh, he was talking to her about working out, and yeah. I, I believe uh, you stop me if I'm misquoting the article that you wrote. Yeah, but he yeah. said something like, you know, why don't we work out together? And I believe she responded that she was married, and I think she was also pregnant. Uh, and he correct. responded, "Why does that matter?" Yes, correct. That is the the version of that story I, I have heard. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.